topic of uh, staying focused. Even though I'm just as unfocused and just as probably lost as I ever could be. Um, let's look at this. In uh, first uh, chapter number nine. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. And it came to pass when, call a friend or neighbor, let them know. Welcome to Living Strong. Well, I'm your host, Prof. Johnson. Here it is. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord in the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do. Celebration. It had uh, admonished that he stood before the court system with them. And then he, Solomon, you know, he prayed. He had the temple prayer. And then he addresses the, pre the people before he brings the Ark of the Covenant into the temple. So, the, uh, uh, so verse number two, Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, First uh, Kings chapter number nine, verse number two, that more than one time. He thought of a second time, a third time, and, and somebody made the statement where he's, he's, he's a God of all the time or a God of another chance, or more chances than you can count. So my, no matter how many times you've fallen, you can get back up. As he appeared unto him in Gibeon, and the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. Look at this. Said unto him, I've heard thy prayer in thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hollowed this house, made it holy. I've heard what you've done. Okay, because Solomon's heart is pure. His prayer is pure. He's focusing on something. There's a big picture that's going to come. Which thou hast built to put my name there forever. So who... We got Johnson Temple. We got Smith Temple. We got Solomon's Temple. We got Hagen's Temple. We got Jones Temple. We got everybody Temple but God. To put my, we even got Shiloh Baptist Church Temple. To put my name there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually, forever, continually. My house, my king, the children of Israel. And if thou wilt walk before me, this is it. Here it is. Staying focused. See, the problem is we, we don't want to walk right. We don't want to walk right. You know, old preacher, you got to walk right. Um, you got to talk right. Um, you got to live right. Uh, and don't walk with your back. Can't go back right uh, in your back. Y'all remember that? Here it is. And if thou wilt walk before me, before me. Who do we walk before? Competition. The who's who contest. I had to have a pair of alligator shoes to match the, the dark guys, you know what I mean? To keep up with the Joneses. You know, we had to have a Rolex watch. Remember we arrived and we were still living in the projects, still paying for the van, still paying for the house and the car and the truck. But yet we impressing everybody else because we're not walking before God. Blessed is the man whose mind is stayed up on him. If you would stay for you, not yet there be many adversaries. But your adversaries don't worry about you as long as you're in the wilderness. He don't worry about you as long as you're in the field. He don't worry about you as long as you're walking down the street. He's only concerned about you when you get to the door. When you get to the door of promise, the door of hope, the door of faith, the door of life. And God opens that door. Behold, I stand at the door and he with me. You see? But we got to open. But you know, we tell Jesus, keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Keep a knocking, I got the devil in my house and you can't come in, Jesus. They tell Jesus, big wheel, keep on rolling. Here it is. And if thou would walk before me as David thy father walked, David, David had a good heart. With, see, the Bible says David had a mind after God, um, a, a heart after God. When it said David had a heart after God, it means that, see, what God did open up David's head and he stepped inside of David's brain. You see, and God's feet was walking through David's brain. God's words was walking through his brain. I know how that feel. It's rough. All right? I tried it. I tried to hide. I even asked God to show me a place where to hide from him. 
And if it, as David, thy father, walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my, my statutes in my judgment. So God just said, look, all, all, all I want you to do is the right thing. Treat people right, do what's right, be a good judge, keep my judgment. You know, think if we had a, a, a king or a prince today or a leader or a president or whatever that, that cared about the people. We got one now for sure. We do got one. But think if you had more like that that cared about the people. You see, something good is happening. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. The throne of thy kingdom in today's time is thy purpose in life, your establishment, your goals, your dreams. I will establish them. The word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharp and in any two-edged sword. There's no turning back. There's no going back. I see it. I see it. I see it. We are walking towards the anointing. And I see a field of anointing. I see a, 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 a moonlight. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, a fog, a mist of anointing. And I see all the people back in a dry land, in a dry place. And they're being propelled towards it, propelled towards it. And once we hit that anointing, there's going to be cleansing. There's going to be a rewashing and a regenerationing that's going to come through the blood of Jesus. There's going to be a quickening agent that's going to give life back to the people. I'm here to tell you, pastors, y'all, we must set ourselves. We must go into uh, this, this, out, this space. This, I want to say the word outer space. But we must go into that place of God, get into the high places of God, and, and not only that, but allow the Father to begin to use us like never before. It's time to yield unto the Lord because they're the deep place in God. We've got to find the deep places, folks. We've got to get there. And that's all there is to it, pastors. We're we going to have to do it because right now, we don't have to worry about... Um, Demon casting out demons. Most devils cast the pastors out the church. You see, and there's a whole lot of churches to, to where the devils, well, yeah, I don't have time for that. The deacon will vote, vote him out in a minute. Let, let me, let me. You better let them out at five minutes to 12, sir. Okay, so they can light up the air with Puff the Magic Dragon and turn the, turn the clouds gray. You see, that happens all over the land. I know churches like that today. The max is 10 after. 10 after is the maximum. Pastors get fired in Baptist churches all over the land. Them Southern Baptists, all the rest of them, you get fired. Pentecostal churches, oh, oh y'all forget that. They're going to starve you. They'll shout to 4 o'clock in the evening until everybody broke. And then send them home. Here it is. Uh, where am I? But. Uh, 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 let's, look at, let's look at verse number 5 again. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Think about it. There shall not fail thee e a, a man in the White House. Wouldn't that be something? Staying focused. But if you shall, but if you shall at all turn from following me, what? Oh, we following Jesus. We got him everywhere now. I love it. I love it. I love this, this, this new wave Christian Jesus that I've never seen before, never heard of before, that's in all programs, goes on hunting trips, fishing trip with folks, all on television now, with a Bible, talking about the Lord, but yet flying a flag and having in their heart Hatred and racism and selling weapons and advertising weapons against a certain species of a human being in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are, Lord help, Father, y'all excuse me, Father, forgive me for my sins. I pray that you anoint me now. Just, I know, Lord, I need a fresh anointing. Just remove anything now that's, old folks say, that's, that's not like you. Just let me be a blessing to your people. Let them hear. The Lord said, turn and follow me. He's saying, tell my people to come 
after me. Wave the white flag of surrender and hold up the red flag, the blood-stained banner. For he says that I am that I am. Oh, surely they played the game of life and they've said at variance, mother against daughter, father against son. I said unto you in the last days that the children would become unthankful, unholy, even as the men and women of today. And they will seek a sign, but there will be no sign except the sign of Jonas. And therefore I say unto you that the heart right now Wax cold, but runs as a river of fire. Stand still and know that I am the Lord thy God, and that there is none other besides me, says Jehovah, says Yeshua, says Jesus, through the Ruach HaKadish, the Holy Spirit. Numa in life is here right now. Many will challenge the truth. But their bed shall be made to lie in, for wheresoever the tree shall fall, there shall it lie. Time is at hand, in which they would not take heed or give heed to sound doctrine, but the benefits of mankind. The wayfaring man, the confused woman, the backbiter and backstabbing, backslider. I'm watching them all. Yes, I revealed even unto the prophet. Mankind is excited about flying up in a rocket with a few folks to bump around in the air for about a minute or two and come back to earth. But they should be excited about having their names written down in the Lamb Book of Life. What you are seeing right now, future 2155 is laughing at us. Because what you will see is orbiters in the air. Those little rockets you got now is nothing. You will see the future where people will go up and they will be able to stay up and circle the earth for as long as they can pay. You'll see even restaurants and hotels sitting up in the air, driven with them on rocket ships. But it'll be a different kind, far more advanced than this little gas guzzling hydraulic fuel that they got made out of cast oil. And people sitting up rejoicing. We made history. The first this. Folks happy, shouting, drinking, partying. Jesus and I sat back and laughed because all they see is just a corner of the earth. And I said, Jesus, how is it that they're excited about this? When you've shown me and I've seen the whole earth and left the thing, ain't no telling how many times, and went into places and came back, and you pointed to me and said, you got to get back. I looked down and the earth is the size of a marble. You say, prophet, you got to go. Leave in the second heaven, the throne room of Satan, where there's whited sepulchers full of, full of dead man's bones sat on his chair, walked up on the whited sepulchers of kings. Jesus said, he's coming, you better leave, prophet. Walk to the end of the second heavens. Flip over under it. Look at the earth. And Jesus said, go. I take off. Flight like you've never seen. Boy, and you find that hard to believe. If you don't believe me, 
Ask one person. Ask your Lord, your Savior, Jesus Christ. You can ask folks from the past, and they'll tell you, oh, yeah, he's got the stories, and every last one of them is true. So you lit this little rocket ship, this little dinosaur space age thing. The supernatural is far greater. And brothers and sisters in Christ, if you ever reach that dimension and you ever allow the Lord access to come in and to trust you with his secrets like he trusts me, as the bishop said, prophet God trusts you with his secrets because you are not going to tell anyone. That you better believe, Bishop, not even you. So ask Jesus, this little Lord Fonderoy playing skip to the loo, my darling. No, you need a real man, you need a real woman of God that's going to love you care for you, accept you just like you are. And on top of that, walk together in agreement with Jesus Christ and nothing will be impossible to you and no blessings can be hindered from your life. Why did you say that, Prophet Johnson? Because I'm in love with Jesus. Here it is. Verse number uh, six. <clears throat> but if you shall at all turn from following me, you or your children, and will not keep my commandments in my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. What he's saying is that your children are going to start booging wooging. They're going to start going to the club. You know, like the prophets' uh, children and all the rest of them. You know, the bishop, the past, the PK kids, past the children, the worst ones, and the folks in the church know. But see, what the children don't understand, what the people don't understand is that you may think that the people don't know you, but the spirits out there know who you are. They know who you are, who your daddy is, where you come from, how you grew up in the church, how you serve God, how you're supposed to prophesy and preach the gospel. But yet you out there doing the electric slide, the boogie woogie, and getting down with Toogie Oogie. Oh, come on now. We juking this thing. Oh, y'all know we know how to juke. Come on. Y'all know we know how to juke now. Come on. <laughs> I know how to juke. Well, that's all we did in Mississippi. Some people think I didn't know how to juke, but I did. When I got through stepping on them girls' toes, they were glad to get me off the dance floor. Here it is. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and this house. I'm, 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 I'm going to move you. I'm going to take, I'm going to get rid of you. It's going to go. You're going to lose. That's why you got to stay focused, which I have hollered for my, I, I made this church for me. I made this house for me. But no, you and your children, you're fat. You want to buy name brand clothes, name brand shoes, don't want to give an offering, don't want to sacrifice to God, want to go party, want to go fly. Hey, it's fine. As I said the other day, God wants you to eat, drink, and be merry. That's why God gave us all this food. Have y'all noticed the food lately on television? I love to watch the cooking channels and chops and all that and food channels and all that, but, you know, barbecues and stuff. But have you noticed that food is so creative and everybody got their own secret recipe? recipe. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. It, every restaurant, everybody got their own re Oh, it's a secret. They all got, you can't keep up with all the stuff. You can mix all kinds of stuff nowadays. And that's all there is to it. And so it's strange to see what is happening in the land. Food is everywhere, creative everywhere. Every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. You can eat sea, sea urchins, um, some everything. Who knows? Next they're going to learn how to eat a starfish. <laughs> Who knows? But you, you can eat everything on earth now, it seems like. And I love that kind of stuff. You know, I get, I get just whatever when it start thinking about it, how God just blessed us with everything. I'd like to go to one of those wild game places 
to where I can eat everything from the wildebeest to the Cape Buffalo to the Thompson Gazelle to, to the Kudu to um, I want to eat everything. Everything, y'all. If we stop talking about food, I can move on. Here it is. Um, which, which I have hollered for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among the people. In other words, we just heard about you guys. You know, when the enemy get through destroying you, the people from your past is going to say, yeah, I, I heard about him. Yeah, I know about him. Yeah, I know him. They used to be so-and-so, so-and-so. Yeah, they, they had a good ministry. They had a good marriage. They had a good family. They had a good church. They had a good business. They, they, they had a good job. See, that, that, all of that's what's going to follow you. What happened? They got caught cheating. They got caught stealing. All that stuff going to follow you in life. You'll be a bad word. And in other words, they send bad to your word. You don't have no word for them no more. Better believe that. Mm-hmm. That's true, y'all. I know what a bad word is because right now that's what I am, a bad word. By the word. And at this house, which is high, everyone that passes by it shall be astonished. Because I'm, I'm gonna take it down. God, God gonna take you to the rubble. He'll let him do it. He will let he will let the enemy strip you. You better believe it. Staying focused is very important. That's why I tell the young people, uh, you got plenty of time. You got plenty of time in life. You don't have to rush it. You don't have to rush getting married, whatever. Well, I'm a single girl, and I'm going on 30 years old. Well, praise the Lord. I hope you get another five, ten years before you get a good smooch to have a baby. But, you know, I, I am... 25-year-old man, I'm almost 30 years old and don't even have a girlfriend. Well, thank God! You need to be seeking after the Lord! Find a wife when you're 50! Well, Prophet Johnson, no, I'm trying to help y'all. Let God build the house. Let God build a relationship. What two God joined together? See, God didn't put a lot of us together. The devil did, friends did, family did, false prophets did, preachers did, liars did, hookup did, internet did, Facebook did, your book did, telephone did. Uh, my blood. Everyone that passes by it shall be astonished and shall hiss. And they shall hiss. God, Lord, you know what that means? Look at they ain't, they ain't nothing. You know what I mean? They go, hear that. This is true, folks. This is why I'm telling you to stay focused because God is protecting your rear guard. He is protecting your life, your future. In other words, don't be persuaded. Have your own mind. Too much is going on. Let this mind be in you which was in, also in Christ Jesus. Don't let people control you, manipulate you, dictate your life. You are your own individual. God made only one you, and there will never be another you. You are the ugliest you you're going to ever be, and you are the most beautiful you that you're going to ever be. And the saddest thing about it is that you don't even like you for somebody else uh, you trying to get to like you. You understand approval from folks. No, if you're fat, you're fat. If you're skinny, you're skinny. If you're fat, lose weight. If you're skinny, eat food. There's symptoms out there, stuff out there, signs out there. Oh, Lord, help us. Oh, Jesus. We ain't going to make it. We ain't going to make it. Captain, we're not going to make it. America is so blessed. Until y'all, I don't mean no harm, I'm telling the truth. My brother and sisters from Mexico, what, I don't know how skinny y'all was when y'all came over here, but we got some of the fattest Mexicans that you done ever seen running, it. you talking about in the stove, buggy full up with food, Full up with me, that EBT card done reached the shores of Alaska and done climbed Jacob's ladder. And I'm sitting there looking 
throwing at, I mean everywhere, at the dollar store, at this store. And I'm saying, God, these people are blessed. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Mexican folks are building them houses, buying single-wide trailers, making double-wise and eight-bedroom houses out of them, stacking them up for 24 families, making money, living good, riding new cars, trucks I ain't never seen before. One short one had a truck so tall until he could walk under the truck. All I had to do was crawl under it. That's how tall the truck was, to stand on it in a certain spot. I looked and said, oh, my God. And here I am in this old broke-down jalopy. Wouldn't have won't roll up after this, and they worked the heat burning me up in the sun, and I'm sitting up waiting on a barbecue sandwich with no sauce. Help us, Lord. Y'all are blessed, Mexicans. America, you're taking good care of them. For those people that are coming in, I, all, I, I'm just telling like it is. Y'all are blessed. So when y'all get here, y'all be thankful because y'all are blessed. The moment y'all get in America, y'all got it made because y'all sure getting fat and eating up all that food. And them food stamps, shucks, I wish I had a few of them. Here it is. And uh, why have the Lord done this in this land? That's what they're going to say, into this house, into this house. And uh, it, it, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Well, God, why, we're going to ask, why did you do it? Because of our sin. Sin uh, cuts you off from God. Breaks down communication. Eliminates. Eliminates stuff. They say God don't hear a sinner's prayer. You know, the Bible said God don't hear a sinner's prayer. I love that scripture. I love that, that scripture. Because nobody, they can explain a simple scripture. Like, it is so simple. It is so simple. All right? Here's how it works. You know, Lord, I'm getting ready to go ahead and steal something. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, don't let me get caught by the police. <laughs> Wait a minute now, Lord. <laughs> I want you to protect me while I'm getting this baloney at the, at the dollar store. And I'm going to get a bottle of cherry to go with it. <laughs> Wait a minute. And, and you walk in the store. And you go in there, you get the bottle of cherry or whatever. I don't know what the stuff is. I, I, I'm just trying to think of a drink. And the bologna sound, and the bologna. And then you say, well, I need to get a few candy bars. You get a few candy bars. I'm going to make it short. And then all of a sudden, you, you, you see ain't nobody looking. Oh, I'm getting away. Thank you, Jesus. You helping me out good. I got your angels watching the front door for me, Jesus. He said he'll get the angels over, charge over me to camp around me. Y'all know I'm laughing so hard. Y'all see my jaws hurting. And, and, and the angels watching the door for you. So you make up your mind. And get Oh, I've got to get a bag of these good old ruffle potato chips. And you unbutton your belt a little bit more, stick the ruffles in the back back there where your butt at, pull your shirt down over it. The ruffle sticking up like a teddy bear walking out the door smiling. And next thing you know, your butt going crunch, crunch, crunch. You trying to shut up the potato chip. Next thing you know, you done drop the bologna out your pocket. <laughs> Wait a minute. Next thing you know, boom, boom. And the police is, uh, sir, ma'am, you under arrest. Uh, uh, Wait a minute. I thought God, Wait a minute. You're right. God don't hear a sinner's prayer, do he? That's right. He's not going to hear that. But wait a minute. Here's the other prayer. Lord, I just went out. I just stole something. And I shouldn't have done it. I feel guilty. Forgive me. And Lord, I'm not going to do this no more. And I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lord said, okay, you're fine. In closing, Captain just came out. This is the last verse. And they, we'll pick it up tomorrow. And they, and they shall answer because they forsook the Lord their God. That's why. They forsook the Lord their God. Who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt. Who brought them out of the projects. Who got them from the old apartment houses. Who got them from the teepees. Who got them from hunting rabbits and squirrels. To eating steaks and Boston butts. I don't like that statement. And have taken hold up on other gods, witchcraft, telling you to 
take this vial of water, sending you this cloth, preachers full of witchcraft, sending you them letters with that blue writing on the back of it, speaking of your harvest, sprinkle this dust up on the paper. Witchcraft, cap them clothing, don't come out, and have worshipped them, and served them. That's what they do. So God going to put the dogs with the dogs. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. That's why you got to stay focused. Explain that to King Solomon. Solomon got other projects coming up. He going to meet the Queen of Sheba. Woo! Menelik is going to come up out of there. And the Queen mind going to get blown. And Solomon got a tricker on a smooch. Talk to me, Mary. Talk to me, baby. That's my time. I'd like to thank you for yours. <laughs> We're going to see you guys tomorrow night. Repeat after me. Say, Father, help me to stay focused. Say, I am a sinner, and I receive the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. Forgive me for my sins. And Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It's a done deal. The best is yet to come. God is about to cut your part of the pie. You're getting ready to eat real good. I'll see you tomorrow night. Don't forget, guys, stay focused. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> wow.